Well, hello, hello, and welcome to my situatory. Happy Friday, if it's Friday that you're watching. If you haven't watched before, my name is Jane and I run Snapdragon Life and the Studio Club. And each Friday I come here and I talk about what I've been doing, what I'm going to do, just a little bit of an idea about what goes on in the Studio Club. So last week <laughs> was really, really busy and I went to exhibitions and I went over to uh, the East Coast and I must say this week is much, much less busy and I thought that today what I would talk about is my projects for 2023 and what I'm doing at the moment in terms of just planning for them and why I'm doing them and I'll give you a tour of where the dye garden is going to be and um, yeah show you what I'm going to be doing. So first off the dye garden I am getting really really excited about this. Um, what I'm doing this year is I am deliberately growing crops of dye plants so that I can use them in my um, art and I'm taking over a part of what has been our vegetable garden. So I have here a pile of seeds and I thought I'd show you what I'm going to be growing. Hi Dixie. So first of all lots of these are from specialist um, dye seed suppliers. So these are from Wild Colour which is wildcolours.co.uk and I'll link it underneath here. So I have Coreopsis, which is a lovely yellow flower, and that is Coreopsis tinctoria. The tinctoria bit, which you see in lots of plant names, means that it's useful for dyeing stuff. Um, then I have two packets of madder seeds. Um, madder is what gives you glorious reds, and I planted some three years ago and it was doing really well and I was hoping that my friend Deb who is a wonderful dyer, she's called Mulberry Dyer, I was hoping to tempt her up this year to come and dye some stuff with Madder with me but we had a really really cold snap, it went down to minus 13 here and I hadn't protected the Madder roots, um, something I'm really regretting now and it looks as though they've gone. So I have two packets to retry and I think one of them I'll put into my polytunnel for protection. Then I have here some Dyer's green weed um, and this is Genista tinctoria. Um, look at my, my, I'm going to have to be really really careful sowing these because very precious. Then here from Nature's Rainbow which is again a, a speciality dye seed supplier I have some Japanese indigo. Um, I always thought I, that I wouldn't be able to grow indigo here. I mean, we are really quite cold and damp. But there was a wonderful project called the Indigo Plot went on in Glasgow last year. And again, I'll link to all of this underneath here. And they grew indigo and they got colour from it. And I went along to a class where we did salt rubbing with the leaves and it came out this beautiful um, ethereal teal colour which has lasted so far um, so I thought well I'll give give growing indigo a plot um, a go so I have two varieties I have Sembon which is like a named variety and is meant to give you quite big bushy plants and then I have a one that's just called long leaf variety which is like Sembon but seems to be different and specifically seems to be a little bit hardier so um, I'm going to be growing these both outside and in the tunnel. And the wonderful thing is, look, we've got a QR code on the back with full instructions on how to grow them. So this is from naturesrainbow.co.uk and I'll put the link underneath here. And then I have a, a, a number of non-dye plants that can be used for dyeing. Um, so I have dahlias. I do love the colours that dahlias gave. If, and I thought rather than getting expensive tubers for the dye garden, I'll get a packet of seeds um, because I've had really good success growing dahlias from seeds in the past. Erin um, from Floret Flowers sent me a packet of seeds and they, they did brilliantly. So this is 
do um, Bishop's Children, which are the dark leaved varieties. And then I have a couple of varieties of tagetes, which are the, the marigolds that you traditionally would plant underneath your tomatoes uh, to keep white fly away. So I assume it's to keep white fly away. Um, but they also work as dye plants and I'm very interested to use them in botanical printing. So I have two lovely varieties there that I think will... Um, one of the problems with the dye garden is I think it might look a bit rubbish <laughs> in aesthetic terms because lots of these plants they're not great um, beauties shall we say so I thought if I have patches of things which are very beautiful then that might make the whole space a little bit nicer and then here this is my very very precious packet of weld seeds which were sent to me by Deb the Marlboro dyer um, every year <laughs> I plant them and every year I get like three or four um, plants but every year I learn a little bit more about what they like so I am crossing my fingers that this is going to be the year of the weld crop. Um, so that is my seeds and in a minute I'll take you to see where they're going to be grown but I wanted to show you a piece of knitting because um, <laughs> well <laughs> Partly because if you watched last week's um, knitting section and I was making my, so like I was putting insets into the tank top that had turned out to be really too small, it's now turned out to be absolutely enormous. So I need to completely rethink what I'm doing with that. So instead, I thought I'd bring something that is actually working. So this is a blanket that I am making and I'm making it very gradually it's going to turn out, I think, a bit like one of those temperature blankets that you do over years. Um, and what this is, now when I'm investigating a particular plant that I'm using for dyeing, I dye just um, two or three small schemes, 20 gram schemes of wool. And then I'm using those uh, to knit up this blanket rather than just storing them away in a box. Um, I'm using them to knit up this blanket to show all of the colours that you can get from plants. And these are just plants, these are not specific dye plants, these are plants that are just growing here. And I've been building this up over the last two years um, and so far my tests show that the majority of things, not everything, the majority of things are fairly light and wash fast. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm knitting up these big stripes, um, sort of like big panels, and I think that there's going to be six or seven of these panels, and then I'll do a big border around the outside. Uh, so this is weld, this is a dahlia, um, this is onion skins that I grew. Well, the onions that I grew and took the skins off. Um, this is an alder down here. And you can see there's so many colours. People go, oh yes, it's just like greenery, yellery, you know, where are, is all the brightness? But, you know, this is bright. This is bright. Um, and just look, look at all of the colours that you get. I just think it's amazing and this is why I do it. Um, so there we are. Um, with the seeds, sorry I should have mentioned, the, the whole of my dye project is being documented in something called the Gardener's Notebook which is a, a exclusive blog within the Studio Club. And normally I would just say well you know if you're interested in that go join the Studio Club. But technically at the moment it is shut because I am kind of like relaunching um, it. Um, big big change about which I'm very very excited about but anyway it means that it's shut until the 7th of April. So I thought the fairest thing would be if I made um, like the seed list download available if you sign up underneath here then um, I can send you the list of seeds and the list of suppliers and all of that kind of thing as a neat little download. So I'll put that underneath here. Um, and now I'm going to finish my coffee 
and then I will take you to see the plot outside. Steal away, live for the moment you say will be just fine. Under the stars, we talk for hours, the tales you spoke so divine.